Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm ACC Tarush Jain, a proud friend trammer, and your faculty for UK Tax. Welcome to the revision session for UK Tax, where we learn and revise all the chapters that we covered in 26 sessions. We'll see how all the chapters are forming part of a coherent whole, how they interact with each other, what is what are the key things to keep in mind for each specific chapter uh, and revise some very, very important concepts that are likely to be tested in the exam. So please pay attention. Without any further ado, let's dive in. So briefly, what we'll cover in the session today is the six, summarizing the six key uh, areas of the ACC UK tax curriculum. These include the UK uh, tax system and administration, income tax and NIC liabilities for individuals, chargeable gains for individuals, inheritance tax, corporation tax and value added tax. Remember guys, all of these sessions we have covered in 26 sessions individually. Now we're all bringing them together so that you know you have one place, you have one session where all the concepts that we have learned are accumulated and summarized for you. We will, we will learn each of these important concepts uh, for each of these chapters uh, again, so that you're reacquainted with these concepts and you can go to the, uh, uh, you can start with the question marathon, having all the understanding of all the chapters in one place. We will uh, understand the analysis of the exam structure uh, before the question marathon in, the, in, in future sessions. And we'll learn also a few exam tricks and techniques so that uh, for you to keep in mind before you uh, attempt the exam. So let's begin guys. First chapter as we said was UK tax system. Remember, we learned that there are two main purposes behind taxation, economic factors or so to influence factors like inflation, employment and social justice to redistribute wealth in the country. There are two types of taxation, direct tax, like in uh, direct taxes like uh, corporation tax, chargeable gains tax and so on. Indirect tax is VAT uh, in the UK. We learned that, that there's a, a, a multiple multi-tier system uh, for the UK tax administrations led by the HMRC, followed by uh, uh, who deploy commissioners who are assisted by officers with revenue and customs, and obviously the self-assessment system of the uh, applicable to individual uh, taxpayers. There are uh, seven main sources of uh, tax law, statute law, case law, uh, and other guidances issued by HMRC. We went through each of these in detail. Um, these are very important, uh, these are very uh, uh, there are seven main taxes, of, uh, there are seven main sources of tax law, statute law, uh, that is a, that, that's a budget, case law, the rulings by courts and other guidances issued by HMRC. All of these we went through. Finally, we uh, learned the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. Guys, very, very important. Uh, from an exam point of view might be tested in the form of an MCQ. Tax evasion is uh, uh, avoiding taxes by illegal means like suppressing information or providing incorrect information. Tax avoiding is using tax mechanisms available in the tax legislation to reduce your tax liability. The, uh, tax, evasion, uh, tax evasion is a complete uh, illegal activity with the uh, uh, criminal offense uh, while tax Avoidance is a perfectly legal activity and there are of course mechanisms like general uh, anti-avoidance principles gap to avoid uh, the misuse of tax avoidance structures as well. Uh, finally, we learned about double taxation relief between uh, UK and other countries with which they have a tax treaty. And remember guys, we learned about the ACCA's code of conduct, uh, code of ethics and conduct, which should be imbibed by all ACCA professionals uh, during their um, ACCA journey. And by the time you are qualified, uh, you're, by the time you're a qualified ACCA, all of these principles should be an absolute core part of your personality. Let's revise these principles. Objectivity, that is not allowing bias or conflict uh, to override sub objectivity, professional competence, do care that is remaining ab abreast with the latest developments, professional behavior at all times, integrity and confidentiality of members information. So all these principles guys have to be very, very crucial. Now, finally, we uh, after this, we came to uh, 
how to compute taxation for individuals uh, and we learnt that there are three main sources of uh, income for an individuals uh, non savings income that is employment income trading income property and pension savings income which is interest income and dividend income from uh, uk companies uh, and there are three main categories of exempt income isa that is individual savings accounts remember gains uh, all of the gains and other aspects of it are all uh, exempt national savings and investment certificates and betting lottery and premium bond winnings remember this guys the income tax computation pro forma is very very important you will be tested uh, in the uh, either as a 15 marker would be on on these principles or you might have to combine all of these aspects into one single question we will learn this in when we do the question marathon but it's important to understand the income tax pro forma it includes all aspects all sources of income less the reliefs less the personal allowance and finally we get taxable income personal allowance remember tax free income of 12570 available to all taxpayers and it's reduced when we uh, when the adjusted net income or uh, is more than 100000 uh, adjusted net income is the net income calculated in the, uh, after the reliefs minus the gross gift direct donations and the minus the gross pension contributions remember adjusted net income whenever the adjusted net income is more than uh, uh, 100000 the personal allowance is reduced by the excess of the ani over 100000 uh, and 50% of that so if the ani is coming to say 120000 pa is reduced by 50% of uh, 20000 that is 120000 minus 100000 So in this case, PA would be reduced by ten thousand, and the net PA would be two thousand five seventy. So these are things that we learned. We did a number of examples on this. Again, you need to know how to calculate ANI in the exam. Uh, it's very important that you practice more questions. Coming to, uh, we also learned that the Uh, personal allowance must be deducted in a particular manner that is first with non saving savings and dividend and we know that surplus pa is lost forever we learned that the income tax liability is divided into uh, th three main bands that is basic higher and additional rate and these are different for uh, different categories of income but income tax liability just like personal allowance is calculated in a strict order first we'll calculate income tax liability on non savings income then on savings income and then finally on dividend income pay tax refers to the tax that has already been deducted by the employer in case you're a salaried person pay tax is the tax deducted on source by the employer itself on your salary uh, and that is uh, uh, from when you compute the final tax calculation the pay is deducted from your final tax liability because this is all, uh, always paid coming to marriage allowance guys remember marriage allowance is a transfer of personal uh, personal allowance between two spouses a fixed uh, portion that is 10% is transferred and it is given as a deduction from the recipient's income tax liability all these things guys again you might be tested as part of a larger question or as part of a mcq all of these things have to be remembered very very well there are two kinds of uh, reliefs available to taxpayers losses and qualifying interest payments we'll come to losses in just a minute but qualifying interest payments are low interest payment on loans incurred to finance expenditure for a qualifying purpose you have to remember the qualifying purposes for which in interest on loan uh, is deductible as a relief these qualifying uh, purposes is purchase of plant and machinery for uh, employment shares in an employee uh, purchase for of shares in an employee control training uh, trading company purchase of share in a partnership or purchase of a plant and machinery for use in a partnership for very simple qualifying purposes and only a loan uh, for uh, only and in the the interest on loan uh, undertaken for any of these four things will be allowed as a relief so remember guys we also know that tax relief is given for charitable giving in two forms the gift aid donations and payroll deduction under the gift aid scheme which is also deducted under ani there are two aspects one is the basic uh, uh, rate of tax if uh, uh, you obtain relief at the time of uh, payment by only paying 80% of the amount so in case you are 
uh, <coughs> if you want to donate uh, 100 rupees, uh, you'll only pay 80. The rest 20 will be paid by HMRC. So that is a tax benefit you get. Plus, uh, for uh, for higher and additional rate taxpayers, you get not only this 20% relief, but whatever the gross amount figure. In this case, the 100 is the gross amount, 80 is the uh, net figure. The gross amount is added to the basic and uh, higher rate uh, bands to extend the, those thresholds. So we know that the basic rate band is 37,700. If uh, whatever the gross amount of payment is say uh, th 1000 under the gift aid scheme, this ex band will be extended to 38,700. So your income tax will reduce proportionately basis the new threshold. So it's, it's very important that this is a benefit given by HMRC for to encourage charitable giving and must be remembered. Uh, coming to another very important topic, child benefit tax charge. Ti child benefits are received by individuals in the UK, but if they are married to someone who is making more an adjusted net income for of more than 50,000, uh, uh, then a child benefit tax charge is made. We know the components of the, uh, remember adjusted net income is the same as that one for cal calculate for calculating, uh, for that we calculated for personal allowance. So if adjusted net income of any of the spouses is more than 50,000, is between 50,000 and 60,000. One percent of child benefit is uh, of each uh, 100 pounds of over of income over 50,000 is charged. And if it's over, if the ANI is above 60,000, the entire child benefit received is charged as tax. There is no tax relief available uh, on the child benefit received. Now, tax residency status of an individual, very, very important co concept, guys. It will be tested to you in the exam. No questions asked at all. It's very, very important. It will be tested in some way or the other. So it's very important to know this aspect. The procedure, remember, first determine whether they're automatically non-UK, then see if they're automatically UK residents. If not, if the, both the answers are no, then you see how many days they have spent in the UK and the uh, the number of ties that they have. So let's quickly run through each of them. Automatic non-UK residency tests. If <coughs> they're in the UK for less than 16 days, they're automatically non-resident. Similarly, if they're less than 46 and have not been UK resident in the previous three years, there are they're automatically non-UK residents. And if they're less than 90, uh, 91 days and work full-time overseas, they're again <coughs> automatic non-resident. Similarly, guys, there are automatic UK residency tests to check if they're automatically UK resident. If they're automatically UK resident, it's fine. If they're neither automatically non-UK or uh, automatically non, uh, so if they're uh, automatic, if they're not automatically non-UK resident or neither they're not automatically a UK resident, we will see the sufficient ties test. Sufficient ties. Uh, test is the number of days plus the uh, ties they made to the UK. There are five ties, family tie, that is having a family in the UK, accommodation tie, having a uh, house in the UK which they made using the tax year, doing substantive work in the UK and spending more than 90 days in the UK in either or both of the previous two tax years and or, or, or a country tie where they spend more time in the UK than any other country in the tax year. Again, we did a lot of examples on this and how it works but and this table would be available to you in the examination where the number of days spent and uh, uh, the number of ties met with the UK will determine their tax residency and of course this will differ from this will dif differ also basis whether they were previously resident or non previously resident in the UK. Individuals will be considered previously resident if they were U UK resident for one of the three previous years. Uh, and non-UK resident if they were non-UK resident for one of the one or more of the three previous years. So keep in mind this table, guys. You should learn how to employ these tests. Again, uh, uh, under this uh, component, there will be a lot of information given to you about the individual, where the individual is traveling, where he is working, uh, how uh, how many houses he has, which houses does he occupy. All of this. You will need to read carefully and then determine the number of ties he's meeting and of course calculate the number of days he's 
uh, he spent in the UK to come to a final conclusion whether he is a resident or not. It is a very, very important topic that you must always, always practice. Now guys, let us come to the investment income. This, uh, this is the first component of the larger income pro forma that we learnt. Go back to the pro forma. There are different kinds of income, right? We are starting with investment income. Investment income includes savings income and dividend income. Then we'll move on to non-savings. Then we'll uh, move on to each of the aspects of non-savings income: trading, employment, property, pension, and so on, right? It's very, very important to understand that all of these uh, p form part of a larger whole. So you will get a question that includes all these elements. Uh, it will include. Uh, taxation of savings, taxation of non-savings, taxation of uh, dividend uh, plus reliefs and personal allowances aspects as well. All of this have to be consolidated in your answer. So always, always keep that in mind. So moving back to investment income, first coming to savings, two main types of saving, bank interest, building society interest. Uh, other sources of savings income include, uh, again, NSI certificate, government stock interest, interest from quoted company loan stock. Rate of tax on savings, again, the three rate bands and the ra uh, rate of tax will be given to you in the examination. Other than that, for on savings income, there is a starting rate of zero for of zero percent if your income first falls, in, savings income falls under the first 5,000 of taxable income. Remember, uh, income tax is calculated in a strict order. First is non-savings, then savings, and then dividend. If, say, the non-savings income is 2,000, and savings income is 4,000. Uh, the first uh, 3,000 of savings income is coming within first uh, 5,000. So 3,000 will be taxed at 0 percent. The remaining 1,000 uh, 1, will be taxed at the normal rate, uh, whatever um, may be the case, vis-a-vis uh, -vis their total income. So it's important to know the starting rate. Again, you have to keep this mind. Uh, you have to keep this in mind while computing the income tax computation in a consolidated matter starting rate uh, for savings income uh, is if the, if the savings income is falling within the first 5000 of taxable income similarly uh, basic and additional higher rate taxpayers are also entitled to a savings rate nil band so that is a, this is a tax free income so basic rate taxpayers of a savings income basic rate uh, uh, taxpayers get a savings uh, income nil rate band of a thousand pounds, and higher rate taxpayers get a savings rate nil rate band of five hundred pounds. So th please keep that in mind. Again, guys, income tax reforma something to remember during the exam. Consolidated manner, you have to calculate taxes on each of them individually. Coming to dividend income. Again, received from a company that their their tax cha charge tax in the year in which they received, like just like savings income, they have a sa uh, dividend income nil rate band of two thousand, and which is available to all taxpayer tax free. There's no um, uh, difference between basic and higher or additional rate. It's available to everyone. The rates and uh, levels of uh, bands will be given to you in the examination. So please keep that in mind. Uh, now another important, another few important concepts is individual savings accounts and how they offer tax reliefs. Uh, remember that the ISAs have an annual subscription limit of 20,000 per person which can be invested in a, either a cash uh, ICA or a stocks and shares ICA and there is no limit on the how you proportionate between the two kinds of ICAs. Accrued income scheme again might be tested in the form of an MCQ guys. In this scheme, uh, this is introduced of, uh, uh, an income tax charge on a practice known as bond washing. So, uh, uh, just to give you, just to revise this chapter, uh, this aspect in just uh, a minute. So, uh, for instance, if there's a bond of say the uh, 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 five percent bond of hundred thousand due on June thirty thirtieth June and 31st December respectively. Now what if uh, it is sold on 30th, 30th September? 
so this uh, the income bit, uh, accrued between 30th june to 30th september is uh, accrued as interest income of the seller but the uh, income would be only paid on 31st december which is now uh, and since it is now in the hands of the purchaser it will be assessed on him so this is the accrued income scheme allows that deduction to be made that whatever the interest amount uh, <coughs> the uh, amount of interest paid on uh, 31st december uh, would be uh, 5000 into 6 by 12 that is 2500 out of which that income accrued to the seller uh, who owned it between 30th september 30th june to 30th september that will be deducted from the purchaser's income and will be added to the seller's income so 5000 into 3 by 12 will be deducted that is 1250 and 1250 respectively will be added uh, to the uh, seller's income this is what this scheme teaches us and you should always keep that in mind coming to property income remember two types of property uh, the four types of property income business profits premium and short lease furnished holiday settings and rent a room relief remember for a property income the default will be the cash basis unless stated otherwise cash basis is the default for uh, property always always remember that and we'll calculate it by the rental income received as the income paid uh we know that the cash allowable disc uh, in uh, for for the, for a property business the allowable uh, deductions are those which are wholly and exclusively incurred for the purposes of the business these include insurance property agent fees repairs interest on loan to acquire or improve a uh, let non residential property or a rented non residential property uh coming to financing cost for residential properties guys for if if there's a uh, finance cost for residential property uh, uh, a deduction is given for 20% from the uh, uh, f- and this is given as a deduction from the inc- individual's final income tax liability <coughs> it is not allowed as an expense for the property business itself remember guys understanding these rules is very important because again you will not get a stand alone question you will get a consolidated question what you will have to do is accumulate all the income uh, of the uh, individual from different sources say investment property trading uh, salary and so on and then calculate the final tax liability keeping in mind other aspects and this deduction of say financing costs will be deducted from the final tax liability so you have to make sure that you calculate and you know how to calculate the income tax liability first only then you will get a deduction so it's very important on capital expenditure again cap- expenditure on plant and machinery is allowable deduction when uh, when paid but this doesn't apply to uh, cars and assets provided for use in the residential property itself like uh, tv or a uh, furniture and so on and it's also dif- important to differentiate between uh, 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 and because capital expenditure on land and buildings is not allowable it's important to distinguish between repairs and improvement improvements as a capital expenditure re- repairs as a revenue expenditure which is allowed so please keep that in mind on cars uh the actual motoring costs used for the property and business are de- deductible if not the hmrc approved allowances rate of uh, are used as uh, car related deductions this will be given to you in the exam so you don't have to worry about it so coming to replacement domestic relief now under the property rules th- there is relief allowed for the replacement of the domestic items provided by the landlord if the landlord provides cert- certain domestic items for use in the property like tv like uh, carpets curtains furniture etc you there is any if there's if those items are replaced that replacement cost is allowable as a deduction from the business Uh, uh that uh, re- replacement of these items for uh, is allowed as a uh, as a deduction uh, obviously obviously guys remember it's a business so you may have to everybody has to replace these items uh, for the benefit of the uh, whoever rents the property so 
uh, this is a cost for the business and this cost is allowed as a rep as the replacement cost that is the cost incurred less any proceeds from the disposal of the original item because when you replace it you obviously sell the original item accrual basis you will uh, have to take the accrual basis when the uh, questions mentioned it in the exam it will be specifically mentioned if uh, 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 if property income has to be calculated on an accrual basis property business losses again if there is a loss the property income will be zero and any unre uh, relieved loss is carried forward indefinitely and offset against first future available business profits premium on a ground receive on a ground of a short lease again a very important concept simple to and easy to understand but can be independently tested premium again is a lump sum payment made by the payment uh, by the tenant to the landlord in consideration for a lease right and we the, the computation of the premium uh, uh, accessible as property income is given also given in the uh, in the in the uh, allowance sheet in the examination it will be provided to you in the examination but it's good to remember is that is the premium amount uh, less the premium into 2% into n minus 1 where n is the length of lease or the number of complete years on furnished holiday settings it's, it's treated as a uh, separate trade so you have to calculate it independently uh, now furnished holiday conditions have a uh, certain eligibility conditions that it must be let on a commercial basis for at least uh, 105, uh, 105 days in a year and must be available for letting for at least 200 days a year, 210 days a year. So all of these are will be furnished holiday settings. Again, if there is a period of long, uh, uh, long term occupation then it will stop being a furnished then it will stop being a holiday accommodation and it will uh, be no, uh, considered a normal property so uh, any long term occupation long term occupation uh, is the, is like a continuous uh, occupation of the property for more than 31 consecutive days if these periods account for more than 50, 155 days in a year it will not be considered a furnished holiday setting again i'm revising these aspects because it's a very important that these concepts are reinforced guys because you will have to calculate it uh, uh, in the exam rent to room relief again guys when uh, individual is renting part of the house in which he is also living he is allowable for rent to room relief if the gross annual rent received are less than 7500 the income is entirely exempt if the annual receipts are more than 7500 they are assessed at the lower of excess of gross rent over 7500 or rent calculated in the normal way now let's go back to that example that we did in the uh, during the session exam if the rent in is 8000 8, and expense uh, uh, say 2000 if in the normal way his uh, rent property will be assessed at 6000 income but under the renter room relief his property will only be uh, uh, in, uh, taxed at 500 that is excess of 8000 over uh, 7500 so this is a huge tax relief for individuals renting a part of their home to another person and this is something that need to be remembered in the exam come to the employment income guys now employment income very very important uh, aspect if you're uh, 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 in a long form question of 15 marker it's likely that uh, a number of aspects of the employment income are tested uh, for your <coughs> to test your knowledge remember employment uh, if the contract is of service to an employer then it is an employment if it's for services to a client then it is of self-employment uh, so we did uh, each of these aspects in detail the components again remember the components of employment income guys salary bonus benefits reimbursement cash vouchers and allowable deductions are expensive and incurred wholly and exclusively for the purposes of business contributions to occupational pension scheme subscription to relevant professional bodies charitable donations under the payroll deduction scheme travel and subsistence expenses use of own car mileage allowance which is given under approved mileage allowance or uh, amap which will be given to you in the exam and the net figure will be the employment income now the date of received of employment income is the earlier of actual payment or becoming entitled to the search of payment but there are certain safeguards for directors who are actually uh, able to determine the date of their payments so uh, manipulate them so there are special rules for them 
please please keep in mind these rules because it's it's it might be tested to you in the form of an mcq all these rules are very very important <sighs> remember guys a deduction for certain types of uh, expenditure are specifically allowed uh, under the rules that is as we discussed contributions to registered occupational pension schemes subscription to professional bodies provided they are relevant to the industry in which the uh, individual is operating payments made to charity under the payroll deduction scheme expenditure on business related travel capital allowances for plant and machinery travel expenditure of course uh, not available for normal commute to office now reimbursement of employees expenses uh, by an employer now if uh, an employee incurs a certain expenses and uh, it is reimbursed by the employer that is taxable income however if they are uh, business related expenses which are allowable for which are allowable as deductions under the normal scheme of things they will be allowed as deductions as well just uh, obviously this is this is the logical thing to do so please keep that in mind approved mileage allowance payments remember this is given to you this is in regarding to use of motor car for business purposes and hmrc has approved uh, mileage allowances which is given to you in the examination if uh, the payments made by the employer are more than the uh, allowed payments there is a taxable uh, uh, benefit for the employer in tax as their income if they are less uh, than the approved mileage payment Uh, then uh, an allowable deduction. The difference is allowed as a further deduction from the employment income. So it's important to remember that. On employment benefits, now very important chapter, guys. Very very important component. You have to remember all of this. This will not be given to you in the exam. You need to memorize uh, all of these aspects very very well, and you'll only be able to register these when you practice a lot of questions. We'll be doing a question marathon specifically on these things a lot. but uh, important things to remember the principles are there are two types of benefits taxable benefit and exempt benefit for uh, uh, exempt benefits are of course tax free for taxable benefit they are reduced by any contributions made by the employee towards that benefit so if there is a taxable benefit of say 5000 and uh, out of which 2000 is paid by the employer by the employee himself only 3000 will be assessed as a taxable benefit and it will of course be time apportioned if the uh, it was only available for part of the year so key exam benefits i want everyone to just go through all of them in details like trivial benefits of um, uh, you'll need to remember these thresholds very very well because um, if it crosses the threshold it will be need to be accounted in the tax computation so be very mindful of these trivial benefits or uh, less than uh, of uh, 50 rupee of less than 50 rupee uh, pounds per gift employer uh, are all exempt benefits other exempt benefits include employer's contribution to a registered pension scheme provision of one mobile telephone dinner parties or uh, uh, employee parties where cost per head does not exceed 150 per pounds remember again if the cost exceeds 150 per pound the entire amount will be taxable uh, not just the difference the entire amount will be taxable on the employee as well so uh, Uh, not only employers have to be careful employees have to also be careful in ensuring that they do not get undue benefits from their employer workplace nursery reduction and re removal of expenses up to 8000 points per night some travel related expenses again remember the thresholds for medical leave gift uh, for any long service awards or uh, pension advice and so on all of these th thresholds you have to remember very very well guys because uh this will be tested to you in some form of the other most likely in the form of a larger question most uh, so you will have to account for them in the larger tax computation and it's very and it happens usually that these little things these little aspects are missed during the exam uh, so it's important that you memorize these things and practice a lot so that uh, these things always uh, register in your mind while reading a question taxable benefit as we learned uh, is that the taxable amount of benefits is the cost of providing the benefit by the employer unless there are of course specific rules to govern that benefit now um, one few major benefits to 
that are taxable include living accommodation where there is a basic charge based on hire of annual value of the property or rent paid by the employer and an additional charge for expensive um, accommodation where uh, the cost of providing uh, accom- the excess of the cost of providing accommodation over 75000 is uh, multiplied by the appropriate percentage to get the additional charge now remember again cost of uh, providing the recommendation you need to remember how you uh, calculate the cost of providing the recommendation this will be a very important part of your workings when you are if you are in, in encounter such a question the original cost uh, plus the capital improvements prior to the start of the tax year is the cost of providing the uh, accommodation where the uh, but where the employer acquired the accommodation more than 6 years before first providing it to the employee now remember guys if the uh, the employer who is providing the living accommodation acquired the accommodation more than 6 years prior to making it available to the employer we use the market value instead of the original cost all of these things will have to be remembered again these are very important things little things little junk gets that may be missed in the exam it's important that you don't so assets provided in the accommodation with the uh, accommodation like furniture or tv or whatever are taxed at 20% of the cost every year now there is no benefit arises if there is a job related accommodation uh, and uh, the taxable benefit for job related accommodation is 10% is limited to 10% of net earnings that is employment income excluding the benefit excluding the, this benefit so so you need to know all these little things on for each benefit there is a different calculation uh, all you need to you need to know all of these calculations for instance uh, for living accommodation that is cost of living accommodation for job related accommodation that's net earnings calculation all of these you have to remember coming to motor cars again when a company car is made available to the employee for private use a taxable benefit is arises a list price into appropriate percentage remember our sessions guys we did a lot of questions on this appropriate percentage is based on the co2 emissions and whether there are petrol or diesel car <sighs> less employee contributions for the private use of the car and that would be a taxable benefit um any capital contributions made by the employee towards the car will be deducted as well up to a maximum of 5000 pounds uh remember guys this uh, the appropriate percentages will be given to you in the examination uh always always but always remember these uh, percentages uh, if the emissions are less than 50 more, between 51 to 54 grams for a petrol car is 14% and there is a 4% markup on diesel cars similarly if it's 15 grams it's uh, 55 grams is 15% and 19% respectively and for uh, each comp- uh, additional 5 grams over 50 gram- 5 grams there is 1% uh, more up subject to a maximum of 37% so if if the uh, if the uh, car has a co2 emission of say 100 grams uh that co2 emission will be uh the 45 grams is in excess to 55 grams divided by 5 is 9 so 9% plus 15% 24% will be the list price would be the appropriate percentage for a car with 100 grams of co2 emissions you need to know these calculations very well for the examination for electric powered cars as 1% for hybrid cars there is of course depending on the electric range of the car which then this table would be given to you in the examination private fuel is where private motor the fuel for private motoring is provided by the employ- employer and in this case is the base figure into appropriate percentage appropriate percentage remains same as above base figure will be 24600 which will again given to you in the examination so please 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 remember that similarly now coming to vans as a taxable benefit on a flat scale flat scale charge of 3500 per annum and if if the uh, if it's a zero co2 emission van there is zero charge beneficial loans are where 
loans are provided at a rate below than two, uh, below two percent, and in case and the diff and the benefit is the interest that would have been charged if it was two percent minus the interest that was actually charged. So the difference is the taxable benefit. And there are two methods of calculating the average method and the precise method. Uh, we we discussed that during the session, so please go back and learn these sessions well. Uh, sim gi giving uh, just to give you a brief overview, an average method is when we use the average bal uh, outstanding balance of the loan to calculate the interest. And precise ac accurate method is uh, when you use month-wise uh, balances uh, of of outstanding interest. There's not much difference between the two, so you can use it in the exam interchangeably. But remember one thing: that beneficial loan uh, uh, benefit is not available is uh, exempt if it, if the loan is no more than ten thousand. Gift of assets. Uh, again, we know that when an asset is provided, twenty percent of its cost is assessed as benefit during its use. If a new asset is gifted, its cost to the employer would be the benefit value. If it's a use of asset followed by a gift, then uh, it's the higher of mark of the the benefit is the higher of the market value when gifted, or market value when f the gift was when the asset was first made available minus the benefits already assessed at twenty percent. So obviously, guys, when gifts are uh, assets are first used and uh, gifted, uh, the benefits already. accrued to the employee because of their usage will need to be deducted and this is the mechanism to do just that coming to pensions guys again a very important topic might be definitely worth the four or six marks on the exam so let's let's dive in pension scheme we know it's a it's a retirement plan uh, that allows you to get some income after you retire provided uh, but your scheme pension scheme must be registered with the hmrc two main types of schemes occupational pension schemes by the employer and the personal pension schemes occupational pension schemes again set up by the employer two kinds def defined benefits where they are uh, where the benefits on a time are linked to the level of earnings of the employee during the employment and money purchase schemes are uh, based on the returns made by the Uh, fund uh, the pension fund itself so obviously money purchase scheme slightly risky but obviously uh, potential for higher returns as well while defined benefit would a, would be a fixed amount of money received uh, by the uh, individual concerned so uh, yeah, uh, every individual has to make a call how to invest uh, bet uh, their pension their savings between the two kinds of schemes personal pension schemes can be established by any individual and are usually money purchase schemes tax relief is available for pension contributions uh up to a lower of total uh, pay, uh, contributions paid and the maximum annual amount maximum annual amount is higher of 3600 and 100% of relevant earnings now again relevant earnings is different for uh, pensions relevant earnings include taxable trading profits employment and profits from uh, furnished holiday settings but not investment income again guys remember um if there are multiple aspects in the exam in the same question you have to calculate the e uh, relevant earnings or net earnings or uh, uh, or adjusted net income separately for each of these uh, elements so it's possible that a, a, a question con con uh, contains one aspect of personal allowance where the adjusted net income is more than 100000 one aspect of pension contribution where relevant earnings will need to be calculated one aspect of job related accommodation where net earnings will have to be calculated all of these things will have to be computed separately so you need to know how are these calculated in case of pension relevant earnings does not include investment income tax relief for pension contributions applies the same way as gross gifted donations you get a 20% relief on source and uh, extension of basic and higher rate bands as well occupational personal schemes of course payments are made gross and relief is given from the pay system against the employment income now against the you know occupational pension scheme its employers uh, as well uh, make a contribution to the pension scheme apart from employees employees are of course making a 
uh, a contribution which is again as i said given as a reduction under pay employers also make a deduction which is not only an expense uh, it is a, a tax free benefit for the employee but a tax deductible expense for the employer concerned so it's a win win situation for both but it is added to the pension contribution uh, of the employee to determine whether the annual allowance is exceeded now what is annual allowance annual allowance is the amount of tax free uh, pension contribution available in a tax year it is 40000 for for the current year but it can uh, uh, pre- for, uh, annual allowance of previous 3 years can also be used so a total of 160000 of annual allowance can be uh, maximum available in a, in a in a tax year assuming the 3 previous years have, uh, are lying unused so remember guys when the total of all pension contributions exceed the annual allowance there is a tax charge on the excess we learned how to apply this with the example and all that and tax charge is calculated again as the top slice of income at non savings rates remember again all of this may be part of a consolidated question so you need to know you need to calculate the savings rate for all other aspects first before coming to the uh, added liability for pension all of these things will have to be calculated remember again if the adjusted income uh, exceeds 240000 annual allowance is uh, reduced by 50% uh, by uh, 50% of the excess of adjusted income over 240000 uh, again in this case adjusted income is calculated slightly differently it is net income from uh, income tax computation plus employees uh, occupational pension contribution plus employers uh, contribution to any scheme if it's more than say 240000 say imagine it's 270000 so the excess of that over 240000 30000 50% of that will see, uh, will be reduced from the annual allowance so annual allowance for this year would be uh 15000 min- uh, 40 40000 minus 15000 that is 25000 again these things are different for every uh, aspect of the computation again adjusted income must not be confused with adjusted net income of personal allowance which is a different concept entirely all of these thing again to understand the differences and the the interaction between these two elements it's important to practice a lot of questions so we'll come to that uh accessing the pension fund remember guys once invested funds can grow in a registered uh, scheme tax free which is exempt from income and capital gains tax income from money purchase schemes which can be withdrawn in a flexible way Uh, so, twenty-five percent can be withdrawn as a tax-free lump sum sum, and the remaining seventy-five percent can be uh, done in a variety of ways, including an annuity. Now, in order to again, there is a lifetime allowance on the uh, amount of uh, 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 tax-free sums that you can put in a pension fund. This is to again disallow wealthy individuals from having their income grow tax-free. There is a lifetime allowance on this. Lifetime allowance is one point. Zero seven three million pounds. If there is a, so, if the fund is more than that, there will have to be tax paid on this. So, coming to income from self-employment, guys, again a very very important chapter from exam point of view. Again, a big if it's a consolidated income tax computation, a big part of it will be coming from income from self-employment. So, it's important that you learn all the concepts very well. again go back to the session in detail understand the number of things but we'll just do a quick summary here remember to understand and to to identify whether a, a particular individual is in self employment we have a number of badges uh, that can be remembered by the mnemonic devices of so firm and fast and each of these deno- uh, denote a certain criteria that an individual has to meet to be considered a self employed person for instance the period of ownership of an asset if it's short term period it's uh likely that it's they are in a trade because uh the ownership passes as they make a sale 
frequency, if the number of transactions are frequent, then it obviously indicates trading. If the reason for sale is again uh, for the profit motive, it again indicates the existence of a trading or a self-employed relation uh, of a self-employed relationship. An existence of similar trading transactions again. Uh, if similar transactions are carried out on a recurring basis, it obviously indicates trade. Remember, there's a difference between accounting profits and tax uh, taxable profits. And uh, in the question in the exam, you'll be given accounting profits, will you have to, which you will have to make uh, uh, adjust to uh, the uh, profit as per the tax law. So there are four main adjustments that you make to the accounting profit. You add the expenditure, uh, which uh, the tax law prevents from being a deduction, but was uh, did, uh, which was a deduction in the statement of profit and loss in the account, but is not allowed as a uh, deduction under tax. You also add taxable income, uh, which was not included in the, st the statement of profit and loss. On deductions, you deduct uh, those deductions which were not deductible uh, in the statement of profit and loss, but al are allowed as deduction, and you deduct uh, uh, the income which may be included in the profit and loss but uh, not included in the but uh, should not be taxable as trading income these are usually other forms of income say like uh, interest or uh, dividends which are assessed to tax but not under the trading's income component so remember these four adjustments guys and capital allowances is, is of course something we'll deal with later Again, always better to remember this pro forma, two columns, one for workings and one for the final uh, uh, figure. It's uh, important to, uh, again, inculcate this formula in your regular way of uh, practice. Whenever you practice questions, make these uh, form, uh, pro forma uh, so that uh, you, uh, you have a structured mechanism and a structured framework to, uh, uh, to, through which you attempt the question. So for disallowable expenditure, guys, expenditure which is not uh, incurred uh, wholly and exclusively for trading purposes will be disallowed. This may be because of it's too remote for the purposes of trade uh, or, or because uh, it has more than one purpose and one of them is not trading. Uh, any salary or paid to the family member of the owner is again uh, allowable provided it's not excessive if it's more than the market value then that uh, additional f figure is disallowed so if the market value is 11,000 but they're paying them 15,000 the 4,000 access is disallowed late payment interest charged by HMRC is not, not a tax allowable expense uh, neither is late payment interest received a uh, income all of this th these things you need to remember any depreciation and so on is uh, not allowable capital. It, it figures under the capital allowances mandate. Restoration cost, again, a disputed area. Restoration must renew a subsidiary part of the asset rather than replacing the entire asset. Only then it will be con uh, considered a uh, revenue expense. Capital ex uh, expenditure is, of course, not allowed as a trading expense. Remember, guys, these are things that you have to remember rental and leasing charges of cars if there's a car worth more than uh, with co2 emissions more than 50 grams per kilometer 15 percent of the rental leasing charges are dis disallowed uh, there are certain conditions to be met for charitable donation to be allowable similarly gifts to customers you have to remember remember charitable for charitable donation it must be a local cha donation and a for promoting the business name only then would be available gifts to customer of a certain nature and below a certain threshold of 50 pounds only those are allowable the writing of only trade debts is allowable writing of, of non-trade debts is not allowable uh, on taxable trading income not included in the statement of profit and loss this includes uh, any uh, goods that the trader has removed from their own business obviously uh, when uh, uh, goods are taken for personal use the profit element must also be uh, included in the 
tax computation, so that must be added. In this case, it will depend on whether or not uh, the trader has uh, accounted or not accounted for the goods. If uh, if they have accounted for the removal of goods, only the profit element must be added in the tax uh, in the tax adjustment uh, computation. If the trader has not accounted for it at all, then the entire selling price must be uh, added in the tax uh, tax profit. Deductible expenditure, which is not included in statement of uh, statement of profit and loss, but which be allow allowable as tax deductions, include uh, yeah. the trading element of lease premiums when he uses private residence for business purposes. Uh, again, business calls from private telephone and so on. The lease aspect would be uh, again we did all of these through, through examples, but the lease premium aspect is where we add back the amortization charge and deduct the allowable expense of the uh, uh, lease pre uh, premium. Uh, this has we covered income that is not included, that is included in the statement of fraud, but is not charged as stable income is capital receipts. Uh, of course, different kinds of income like interest income, which is taxed for the individual, but not as part of trading income. And of course, exempt income like interest received on repayment of tax and so on. Again, pre-trading expenditure, uh, uh, expenditure uncut pre-trading is allowed as deduction provided they were also provided uh, they were allow they constitute as allowable deductions on the first day of trading. There is cash basis option for smaller businesses. Uh, so, uh, so, and there are th thresholds for that that you must always keep in mind. Coming to an extremely important chapter on capital allowances, guys. Now, capital allowances is 100% will be tested to you in some form or the other. Absolute sure shot in the examination. Uh, uh, an ACCA tax examination is incomplete without a capital allowances. So you have to know this very, very well. Again, this is uh, in lieu of depreciation on qualifying assets. They're given on the original cost of an asset and all subsequent qualifying expenditure of a capital nature. And they're obviously an allowable deduction or tax adjusted profit. Uh, remember, it's allowed on plant and machinery which perform active functions in the organization. The most common examples for of plant and machinery are computer software, machinery, office furniture, uh, cars and lorries and so on. Right? So there is a main pool, there's a special rate pool, there's a short life asset, there is a private use asset and so on. All these four, uh, all these concepts need to be revised and summarized very, very well uh, and understood very, very well for you to, to clear the exam. So coming to main pool, most of the assets are fall into the main pool and uh, they're uh, where they're accumulated and a final written down allowance is given on the balance of the main pool. So most items, as I said, plant and machinery are available in the main pools. Some motor cars are also included in the main pool. These include cars with CO2 emissions between 1 to 50 grams per kilometer and second, car, second hand cars with zero CO2 emissions. Remember, there's an annual investment allowance of 1 million pounds available, where a 100% allowance is given um, for the first <coughs> 1 million pounds of expenditure on capital assets. So if, uh, uh, if a company, say, if an individual sends, say, 1.2 <coughs> million pounds on capital assets, 1 million of this will be given as a 100% allowance. So this will be <coughs> allowed entirely. Only the the remaining 200,000 pounds will be transferred to main pool or uh, special rate pool depending on the kind of asset purchased. Some key aspects of annual allowance that you must remember that it's not available of cars. If it's a short, long and short period of account, the AIA will reduce or increase proportionately, not allowable in the period of account uh, uh, in which the trade ceases. On zero emission cars, there is the, uh, again, 100% first year allowance is um, given that is it is completely tax free and whatever the purchase original cost of the car is 100% allows as a reduction in capital allowances. And coming to written down allowances, guys, the balance on the main pool after everything is given is given as a 18% allowance on a reducing balance basis. Again, we did a lot of examples on that. Go back to the session to understand the details of how it operates. It's very important that you understand 
where when to apply the 18% deduction 18% written down allowance on the balance right just to give you a brief it's uh, given on unrelieved expenditure in the main pool brought forward at the beginning of the account any additions where uh, uh, either the annual uh, investment allowance or the first year allowance is not available or where the annual investment allowance has already been exhausted and after taking account all disposals the sa on sale the disposal value is the lower of uh, sales proceeds and original cost and it is deducted from the total of the uh, value of assets brought forward plus any additions uh, in the pool uh, remember guys uh, in case the sales proceeds exceed the balance of uh, the asset brought forward there is a balancing charge which is which is added to the tax profit so for instance if the va value of the asset in the pool was say 100 pounds but it was sold at 200 pounds so the sales proceeds is more than the balance in this case so to offset this there is no there can no be no allowance so there is the 100 uh, is added as a balancing charge <coughs> and if there is an overall balancing charge at the end of the year <coughs> it is added to the tax adjusted trading profit because this is a addition to the profit and there are specific steps that you must undertake uh, for calculation of any capital allowances on the session of trade you don't ca you calculate any additions you do not calculate any aias wdas or uh, first year allowance you deduct any disposals calculate a balancing charge or balancing payment and there should not be any balance carried forward after the session of the trade obviously uh, uh Uh, when the trade ends there should be no balance of assets remaining in the main pool or any pool for that matter so balancing charge or a balancing allowance will have to be given now balancing allowance guys uh, if there is um still amount of asset uh, still some uh, amount received uh, amount remaining in the main uh, in the pool in the asset pool after sale of all assets this is allowed as, is allowed as a balancing allowance and this is the only time <coughs> a balancing allowance will be uh, will be arisen in the main pool so all of these things you have to remember very well during the exam now coming to assets with private use of the by the owner of the business only the business proportion guys is available for capital allowances now capital allowances or the different kinds of capital allowances that are aia or first year allowance or written down allowance are calculated based on the full cost but only the business proportion is actually used in the capital allowances deduction and most of the uh, private use assets that you will encounter in the exam it would be motor cars with private use so be cognizant of that when you're reading a question special rate pool is a is a different pool where written down allowance is given at a lower percentage of 6% rather than 18% and these are uh, the qualifying assets for these uh, pools are long life assets integral features of a building or a structure thermal insulation of a building and high emission cars that is emissions worth more than 50 grams per kilometer again guys these are uh, these these are things we discussed these are assets which are arguably for a longer life and they depreciate over a longer period of time so the the written down allowance is less and they are uh, they are uh, treated separately for the purposes of capital uh, allowances there are definitions for each of the three say long life assets integral features and high emission cars it's important and imperative to learn these and be mindful of these while attempting a question the small pool written down allowance if the uh, balance uh, pool remaining in the written down allowance is less than 1000 then that can be taken off uh, then that can be written off in the years computation itself uh, this is another relief that 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 uh, hmrc offers to taxpayers short life assets is are those assets 
which uh, are expected to be sold within eight years uh, of their purchase. So they, they are treated as a separate column uh, in the capital allowances computation. Again, we did this. Uh, and because they are bought with the intention of being sold within eight years, they are uh, calculated separately. And when they are sold within eight years, uh, uh, a separate balancing allowance or balancing charge is calculated. Remember guys, as we discussed during the session, this benefit allows them to uh, calculate a, to get a, a balancing allowance on the sale of the asset. In, in the normal course of business, if it's only part of the pool, the allowance, <coughs> the allowance figure for the main pool, <coughs> the larger allowance figure for the main pool will not be as much as the <coughs> balancing allowance that you get for this asset alone. So in order to get a, a higher amount of balancing allowance on the sale of asset within those eight years, uh, this uh, special column is uh, created for short live assets. Coming to structures and building allowances, guys, again, very, very important. We learned that these are <coughs> capital allowances incurred on non-residential structures or buildings or renovations after 2018. Uh, and they are given a, a fixed rate al uh, allowance annual straight line allowance of 3%. So if they are, say, bought at the rate of, bought at 100,000, they will be given a 3% allowance every year. That is 3,000 every year, even if the asset, the ownership of the asset changes from one person to the other, this will remain the same uh, no matter what. So this is uh, so guys, before we move on to the next chapter, I just want to remind all the things we've done so far. We've revised the different, uh, the calculation of different sources of income for an individual taxpayer. Remember, there are three types of incomes for an individual taxpayer, non-savings, savings, and uh, dividend income. All of these we have calculated, learned how to compute their incomes for the tax computation. Uh, if a consolidated uh, question is asked. So when, uh, if you're asked a consolidated f uh, question, all of these principles and all of these computations need to be uh, uh, inside your head and you need to be very, very well prepared in order to uh, attempt the question well. So moving on to sole trades, uh, the basis of assessment, of course, uh, the opening year rules this is, of course, identifying the uh, year in which the accounting profits or the trading profits will be taxed. The basic rule is, of course, so obviously the basic rule is that the profits from a, uh, in a 12 month period of account will be taxed in the, in the tax year in which it's ending. So we know that the tax year for tax, uh, tax year for in the UK is 6th April to 5th April. In the current year would be 6th April 22 to 5th April 23. And if the if uh, all the period of account ending be between these two dates uh, will be uh, assessed in this tax year. So for instance, if there is a period 12 month period of account ending, say 30th June 2022, this will be taxed in the tax year 22, 23. Now similarly, if there is a tax year and, uh, and if, it, if there's a period of account ending 30th April 2023, this will be taxed in the year 23-24 because this lies between 6th April 23 and 5th April 24. So period of account ending in a particular, uh, the end date of a period of account will determine which uh, tax year uh, it falls into. Uh, and we know the tax year, the tax year will remain 6th April to 5th April. So it's very important to know these basic rules. There are also special rules in case of opening year rules. Remember, we did all of this. We practiced a lot of questions on this. For the first tax year, the, the basis of assessment is the, from the date of commencement to the following 5th April. Second tax year, the, the treatment differs basis 
the length of the period if it's less if it's 12 months the first uh, the the period of account is the basis of assessment if the if it's less than 12 months the first 12 months of trade are the basis of assessment if it's more than 12 months the last 12 months are the basis of assessment similarly if there's no period of account ending in the tax year which is also possible if there is a very long period of pe account then the actual profits from the in the tax year that is 6th april to 5th year will be considered the basis of assessment similarly there are th special rules for third year as well Remember, overlap profits is again a very important concept. These are profits that are taxed twice because of these opening year rules. There are certain profits that may be taxed twice. Now, they are carried forward indefinitely and deducted uh, in the year in which the business ceases. So uh, these have to, these remain frozen until the business ceases. So just like opening year rules, we also have closing year rules where. Um, uh, we identify the profits in the final year and of course deduct the overlap profits uh, uh, from the opening year rules to calculate the uh, uh, final year seizing uh, year profits uh, and we did a lot of examples on this again this is something that might be tested to you uh, as a form of a an mcq or a case study but all these concepts are, should be very well understood using illustrations Quickly on to partnerships, guys. Partnerships, again, you know, it's a body of persons carrying on business together with a view to profit. Every partner is taxed individually. They are taxed on their allocated share of profits as if they were a sole trader making those business. Allocation is based on the profit sharing ratio. Remember, partner salaries and interest on capital it will not be a deductible expense for the partnerships since they're only a p appropriation of profit, not a expense for the business. And uh, so just like there are opening and closing rules for individuals, they are, there are opening and closing rules for each new partners who join the partnership and uh, closing year rules for those partners who leave uh, the business. For all the other partners the com uh, uh, who remain in the partnership, the, uh, the, the rules remain the same and the profits are calculated in the normal way. So coming to trading losses for individuals, guys, again, a very, very important chapter, a, a short shot in the exam, something that the examiner loves to test in ACCA. So it's important that you know all the aspects governing here, trading losses for an individual. So we know that when a trading losses occur for an individual, the trading income is zero. And there are a number of loss relief options, uh, which are carrying forward trading profits, relief against total income, relief against gains, Relief against opening year loss relief and terminal year loss relief. You need to know the features and the components, the claim dates and everything for each of these four options. You will also be, it can also be possible that a comparative analysis is asked for each of the four options. So you need to know every aspect and every feature of all of these four options to get the exam uh, on point. So let's uh, quickly revise all the elements for each of the, uh, these options. Carry forward of trading uh, losses, of course, it's first. Uh, it's carry forward against first available trading profits of the same trade, the maximum amount possible. Against total income, of the, the second option is the relief against trading losses of uh, total income uh, of the current year or the previous year. Again, remember, guys, claim dates of all of these uh, losses must be. Uh, remembered very uh, carefully and very diligently. Uh, it's important for a, from a tax planning point of view that claims for uh, relieving losses are made uh, uh, before the due date. And it's important for your careers and obviously important for the exam because they're asked usually as a, as a two marker MCQ or as a one marker or a, a, a two marker pa uh, question of a larger 15 marker. So it's important to remember the claim dates of uh, loss claims very, very diligently. So for instance, for, uh, relief against, uh, for relief against total income, relief of trading loss against total income, the claim must be made by uh, the, what, within one year of the 31st January following the end of the uh, 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 tax year of loss. So in case of 22-23, this will be 31st January 2025. We also know that relief of trading losses can be relieved against chargeable gains in the tax year of the loss or the previous tax year. And this is deducted before the annual CGT annual uh, uh, exempt amount, that is the EEA, and any capital losses brought forward from previous year. 
In this case, the maximum loss is the lower of remaining loss or chargeable gains in the tax year after reduction of current year losses and brought forward capital losses. Again, so if uh, you are relieving it, your trading loss against chargeable gains, there are a number of things to keep in mind. First, it's done between uh, d before the AE and capital losses brought forward. Then a maximum amount as well has to be computed so that no uh, additional amount is uh, created, uh, claimed uh, in the tax computation. Again, all of these aspects have to be remembered, guys. Uh, the examiner can ask you any of these questions, either uh, in totality or individually. So it's important and you know all the aspects. Claiming debts, as I said, always remains the same. Trading, the special rules for trading losses, relief for trading losses in the opening years. Uh, it applies to loss in the first four years of trading and it's set off uh, and it's uh, relief is available against total income that three years before the tax year of loss on a fee for basis. That is the earlier year first. However, maximum amount must be restricted, cannot be restricted to per, uh, uh, preserve personal allowance. So PA is wasted. Again, very important for the purpose of tax planning, which might again be a question in the exam. Terminal loss relief uh, is, of course, uh, another important concept from the exam point of view because uh, it can uh, it can be a kind of a four four to five marker as part of a uh, a larger fifteen marker or a three or four marker as part of a larger fifteen marker. It, the examiner can is getting very innovative in ensuring that it all the aspects of a of the tax system are tested in the exam, so you need to know everything. Terminal losses, obviously, when is uh, the loss is incurred in the final year of trading, there is no option of taking it forward. So the only option is that it, it's taken back three years on a LIFO basis. And the terminal loss for the last 12 months is calculated in a particular way. Right. And you need to know how to calculate that. You have to see the six. So if the date of secession is, say, Uh, say 12th June 2023. So you will take 6th April before the date of secession to the date of secession. See the actual trading loss in the period. See the overlap profits not relieved. Remember overlap profits are, uh, have to be adjusted in the final year law of loss in the final year of trading. Then you also look at 12 months before secession date. So we took we go to 12th June 2022 to 5th April 2023 and you see actual trading loss in the uh, period. So you take the 12 months prior to the date of secession to calculate terminal loss and apply terminal loss relief accordingly. There is of course a maximum deduction when there is a claim against uh, total income there is a, a maximum deduction that can be made and this is the greater of 50,000 or 25 percent of adjusted total income. Again, adjusted total income, remember guys, calculated differently here, total income minus gross personal contributions. It's important, it, I would advise that you carry these notes with, in your exams with you, so you have that uh, reference right before the exam as well. Uh, it's, al it's also beneficial to make a cheat sheet or a formula uh, appendix so that you know all the formulas to keep in mind during the exam. Uh, adjusted total income is one such formula under the trading rules. So again, maximum deduction. So uh, all these things will have to be kept in mind uh, from a total income point of view that if there's a loss relief claim, the maximum uh, amount has to be restricted as well. Guys, again, I just want, before we move on to other things, before we move on to national insurance and tax administration, I want to again bring to your notice how this would look in a consolidated basis. If there is a loss relief claim as part of a larger question, you will have to first calculate. It's possible that the examiner asks you to, ask you to first calculate the loss and then apply the loss relief options. All of this is possible in a 115 marker. So it's important that you know the entire life cycle of computing the income and then computing the loss reliefs. Coming.